Good afternoon, everyone. It's um, good to be here. So my name is Joe Baird with Broadsoft. I am the VP of Cloud Video, and this is Dominic Steiner, who's one of our senior developers. And today we're going to kind of walk through a process of not really as much of a product as much of an enablement tool that we're building for our customers to better leverage WebRTC technology. And probably one of my greatest regrets today is that we only have 10 minutes. Dominic normally starts us off with an interpretive dance that I, I hate that you're going to miss. But, you know, it is what it is with the time we have today. So, um, real quick, w with, with regards to Broadsoft Labs, we're building basically an enablement um, environment for our customers where we introduce new technology to them. And in a lot of ways, we kind of have in our industry, we, we, we provide a lot of telephony services to a lot of carriers out there, very some of the largest carriers in the world as well as small service providers. And in a lot of cases, we've got leaders and laggards there, right? And so with Broadsoft Labs, our goal is to lead with the leaders there, but we also are painting a vision for where some of our customers need to go as they continue to see some market share shift a little bit to some of these OTT providers. And so one of the things that we're doing there is, you know, it's crowdsourcing ideas with our customers, right? We're, we're giving them new technology like WebRTC and talking through how do, we, how do we enable web communications in a more compelling way, as well as simplifying the complex. Right? There's a lot of our customers who are not very familiar with WebRTC technology. One of the things that we do inside Broadsoft Labs is we host everything for them. Right? We'll pro provide them our WebRTC gateway that sits in the environment. We provide a open source client, an open source SIP stack that they can use. We customize and tailor it. We host it for them on our web servers. Basically, we're very focused on delivering an enablement model here. So real quick, this is what we're going to see today. This is just one of the small components that we have inside of Broadsoft Labs. We call it WebRTC in five minutes. So the idea is we can have one of our customers come into this environment. They have never touched WebRTC before, but we'll build them a client. We'll host the client. We give them gateway services so they can interact with it. They can call each other. They can call PSTN. It's there for them to actually understand and leverage the technology. So what Dominic will be dis demonstrating here in a couple of minutes is we'll start with a client. We're going to build a WebRTC client, and then we're going to enhance it with different functions. And so we'll demonstrate a click-to-call button function that you can embed in a website. And then we have a place for My Labs where you manage all these components. So our customers can come back and build clients, build buttons, add, change, modify, do whatever they want. So let's go and jump into the demo real quick, Dominic. So as I mentioned, what we'll do is we'll start with WebRTC in five minutes. So Dominic's going to start by building a audio and video client. So we'll build a new client here. So the configuration, we've kind of taken these and narrowed them down, right? There's, there's really a lot more configurations that we can expose to our customers if need be. But here we've kind of got a segment of them. So on the left side are just kind of general parameters. On the right-hand side, more kind of the network configuration components. So they can change them if they want to run it in their own lab environment, but just build it using our tools. So the next portion here is, you know, what kind of client do we want to build, right? We're trying to make this really easy. We bundle it into kind of a framework for them. So they can have an audio client, an audio video, whatever they want. We can give them different sizes. You know, everything is designed here to be very adaptive so they understand what they're going to get. So you can do things like the highlight color, right? When you go over a menu item, you can actually see what that color is going to look like, what it represents. Um, we've got the nav bar settings they can set here. Um, everything's dynamic, right? We can give them the option of seeing messages, right? Customize what those messages look like. Basically, long story short, we're giving them a client, but we're giving them an easy tool to use here. So what you have here is you have the first option of downloading the client, right? If they want to put this into their lab environment, here's the code for you. Like I said, you also have the option of uploading it up to our server. So we're pushing this up to a web server. It's already pre-configured to go to a gateway. So now they can actually start using it. So it's this sense of having this immediate gratification, right? So just a few minutes ago, I didn't know anything about WebRTC, but now I've got a client. It's connected. I could call a PSTN. I could call another client, right? The idea is we have got to get our customers to touch and feel this technology. So Dominic now is going to go create an audio-only client. So I can show you a little bit of a different element here in a few minutes with a click-to-call button. So 
again, he's uploading this up to our Broadsoft Lab servers. Everything is customized to the user there, so we remember everything that they've built, and they can use it and change it, modify it, download it, whatever they want. So this here is the click to call button. I know you've seen a lot of demonstrations of this, so it's not gonna be too terribly shocking, but the difference is that we let you build it, right? So he's gonna build a new client, some basic configuration settings with regards to registration, how you wanna do it. We give our customers some default templates so they can touch it, feel it, experience it, right? So we'll pick this one. Um, so if they want a single destination, they could have this button that sits on the website, it calls one number, uses one client, right, whatever they need there. The other option is for us to do a multiple destination where we say, hey, if you're on the main page, the button will call this number, right, or this SIP URI, and it'll use this client, right? Or if you're on this web page, it'll do this based on this client. So the next phase for this is where we start adding in contextual data, right? Um, some of the talks we've heard earlier are very compelling, and this is a place we think is very, very relevant. You've got to be able to pipe more data in to have the person on the receiving end of that call have more information. So here, what Dominic's gonna do is he's gonna go ahead and go to the next phase, of this, which is where we can either download it if you want to use it in your environment, or we'll upload it. So again, the goal here is for our customers to experience the technology very, very quickly. So what we do is we just put it into a default website for them, right? So the idea is a luxury car, right, website they may have. And on the left-hand side, you, know, you have your different options. What we'll demonstrate here is just leveraging some of the broad soft technology that we have available to them, right? So this is actually touching a media server, right? So we're getting a video IVR experience, right? Now we can hit a DTMF and it drops them actually into a queue, right? That you would have normal music, right? So if this is maybe the Audi page, right? We're gonna demonstrate an Audi R8 to them, right? While they're waiting. So things like that, just to have it a little bit more interesting to show them, look, there's a lot of things that we can start doing in a more compelling way. And we do it with default Broadsoft technology. So the other things that we can do, you know, we could do this as well, calling to the same media server, right? That media server can detect that we're gonna do this via an audio only call. And so in that instance, it can actually go in and just stream back to you the actual audio components. It doesn't always have to do video for that. So that's what you'll see here is where whenever you establish a call, and also you'll see the menu items actually pop up once we've established the call at that point. So what you get to do here at this point is navigate the same way, but you're just doing it audio only. So what we'll do now is we'll kind of walk through and just show you what we do with my labs, right? This is a place where it's a central repository, like I said, for everything that you build. So we give our customers this place, it's like their own sandbox in some ways, right? And so one of the challenges is that WebRTC changes a lot, right? We just had Chrome 35 released the other day and guess what, there's DTLS changes in there, right? That requires changes in our gateway, which requires changes in the client. So as this kind of adapts, we want a central place where our customers can continue to go back and see the newest refresh, right? We, Broadsoft traditionally releases one version a year of our software, right? It's not gonna work real well. So we host this stuff, we provide them easy access to the technology. So here, you know, again, they can go in and, you know, we give them a simple interface to create a new client, a new click to call button, you know, email links, right? You want just a little bit of a HTML snippet that you can drop in an email, right? They can build that here where someone just says, hey, I wanna, it says click to call me through the web, right? And it just directs them to their number if they want. So for the most part, what we're doing here is we're, we're really making a push to enable our customers to have them see more types of technology. So we'll continue to build unique things that are practical, right? From our perspective, where we're really driving towards is we see WebRTC as an endpoint for our Broadworks platform so that you can actually have a viable endpoint. So we're in the process of actually testing and integrating all the features from Broadworks that make sense in the client fully functional in here. So we can put calls on hold, we can do transfers, blind transfers, unattended, making it into a true business endpoint at that point. So the idea is to give them that capability, but then to show them where they can take it further. So again, this is where they can come back to a central console to be able to go in, 
edit, download them, change them, and we'll continue to add things like visual directories maybe, right, where you can put this into a website where you've got a visual experience, if you would say, from the perspective of a directory versus just seeing a number. So those are the types of things that we're working on. So if you have any other questions, um, feel free to catch myself or Dominic afterwards, and we'd love to chat with you about how we're continuing to enable people in the broadsoft world. Thank you. Thank you.